Well hello there and you join us here today to talk all things Rolex, but not the watches specifically, the customer experience. What's been going on? What have you been saying? And what's going to happen next? If there's a Rolex you can't get hold of and you still want to buy it, you can get one on watchfinder.com. There's plenty on there. Check them out. Tom, do you, have you, or will you ever have an aspiration to purchase a Rolex? Funny you should say that because I am... Okay. Very tempted to go into a boutique and try and buy one. Okay. Just to see what would happen. I mean, I'd be worried if they actually got to the transaction phase because I can't afford one. Uh. But I've heard many things about the painful process that is buying a new Rolex. So I'm kind of tempted to just test the water and see what the deal actually is. <laughs> Because I want to know, is is it really as bad as they say? Dear viewer and listener, for this experiment, which watch should Tom go into his local Rolex store and ask for? Hopefully we can actually get him to commit way too much money than he has. Yeah. <laughs> One new Daytona, please, shopkeep. <laughs> oh, can we get the footage of you being thrown out by the scruff <laughs> of your jacket? <laughs> and yeah. stay out! Yeah. That's what, I mean, that's what I'm led to believe will be the case. That's what will happen, right? It's like that, but more passive aggressive. Okay, right. <laughs> Let's start off with wait lists. This is a bone of contention for many a discerning customer of the, the Rolex brand. Let me take you back in time a little bit, Tom. Back when I were a lad, and even a few decades after that, it was possible to walk into a Rolex shop and buy a Rolex. Even before that, there were many Rolexes that you could walk into the shop and hag haggle. You know this word when it comes to watches? Haggle. What, like the marketplace? For discount. Two pound pair. Exactly. Rolexes. Yeah. I'll buy that one if you chuck that one in half price. Wow. That sort of business. That used sure. to happen. But no more. No more. No. It really all began with the Rolex Daytona. That's the first one I recall being a waitlist item, which is kind of ironic because the original Daytona they couldn't get shot of. But I remember it was a few months waiting list. It became a few years. It became this hot ticket item and people were paying over the odds. People were paying five, six thousand pounds for a Daytona, Tom. Can you imagine such an expense? But here we are several decades on again and the Rolex Daytona and indeed many of the watches Rolex makes, not all, but almost, are a waitlist item. How does that make you feel as a customer knowing that you can't go in and just buy one, you have to go on a waiting list? Well, I'd need to speculate as someone who had the money to, to buy one in the first place, but doubly for me, seeing as I don't have the money in the first place, it's, all, it's just a write-off for me anyway. I just kind of feel like, oh, well, there's, there's plenty of other watches, that one, is unavailable it's not worth the hassle that's my perspective on it let me tell you a little story i was in a rolex store the other day and a gentleman walked in an elderly gentleman somewhere in his 70s and he had on a rolex daytona not the ceramic the previous one and he was complaining to uh, said shopkeep that his eyes were no longer good enough to discern the time on his daytona and the shopkeeper was very sympathetic. Oh, that's terrible. Is there another watch here that you might like to replace it with? And he said, that's exactly why I'm here. And he said, oh, I like that one. He just pointed at the first Rolex he saw. It was a Yachtmaster with the rhodium dial. Very nice watch. And two things happened. One, the shopkeeper told him the price, to which the man nearly spat out his teeth. And two, he told him, well, you have to go on a waiting list for it to which if the man hadn't already spat out his teeth, he would have, they would have promptly ejected immediately after that. Um, and he left the shop because he neither wanted to pay that much money or um, go on a wait list. Now, the, perf the person in the shop was perfectly polite about the whole thing, but there you go. The difference between a generation purchasing a watch 10, 20 years ago to now, completely different experience. I mean, if you're visually impaired, you should get a Panerai anyway, for starters. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. It it seems to have crept up on people, doesn't it? It A lot of people were like, damn, what happened to Rolex? That used to be an attainable thing, and now it's just crazy. 
See, my, my dear darling wife decided that she would like a Rolex, an Oyster Perpetual. Uh, and in fact, when we purchased her first watch, uh, which, which she purchased a Cartier, Clay de Cartier, she had the option to buy an Oyster Perpetual then. They, this was four years ago. You could They were both in the window, both available for sale. It's yeah. definitely been frog in a hot pan. It was a Daytona you couldn't get, and then the Submariner crept in there, and slowly but surely each model that you couldn't get meant that people went to the next one along. Now she wanted one, she couldn't get one, we had to go on a waiting list. Get a hazarded guess of how long we waited on that list before we got the call. How long have we been waiting? Two years? Two years. Wow. For a 36mm black dial Oyster Perpetual. That's as basic as it gets. Yeah, there's not there's not anything overly extravagant about that, really. So yeah, that's I'll have it in white. Forget the radio territory. Mind you, does that make it more popular? Because I suppose it's like it made it two years wait list popular. I know that much. I'm not sure the fault here lies with Rolex. I genuinely think the demand is enough. Whether people are buying those watches to immediately flip them, or whether people are buying them because they want them, or people buying huge collections of them, or who they're being allocated to, which we'll get on into a moment. Um, I genuinely think Rolex can't keep up with demand. There's not a big stash of them and they're going, oh, shh, naughty, naughty. Don't show everyone the big pile of Rolexes. They're going, oh, uh. and I think that's why we've been seeing some of those dials that have mistakes on them, because they are throwing them out the door. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. So, a little bit of tin foil hat wearing then there's often you hear things about the the dealers and the boutiques and stuff holding them back in the safes because they know they're hot ticket items they don't need to fly off the shelves they can hold on to them and and get um high value clients to kind of spend stuff in store and then they can issue to them as at their discretion is that do you think that's the case like to rolex they distribute to the the dealers and they say now you don't you hang on to them sell them but the dealers are like mm, we'll see yeah absolutely i think i think rolex is shipping them out to their retailers and i've heard stories of rolex being very particular with their dealers because dealers are doing various things that they don't particularly like um and then it's the dealer hanging on to something for the right person who might give them the longest tail. And of course, why wouldn't they do that? We, we had that conversation with Roman, who was describing how many of these dealers had suffered the, the, uh, the hard end of the stick for a long, long time, having to carry weighty pieces that they couldn't sell because they were pushed onto them. And now here they are with the alternate situation where the power's in their hands instead. You can see why they would want to use it for the maximum benefit. Unfortunately, it does mean that if you went in and one Daytona, please, um, you'll get one something, but it won't be a Daytona. Having said that, I've heard a number of stories of people just walking in and saying, oh, I'll have that Yachtmaster. Oh, do you have anything interesting? And they come out with an Explorer or a Submariner and go, there you go. Contrary to everything we've just said, that can happen. Apparently. Apparently, but I'm in the same boat as you here. It's not happened to me. I've not had that experience. Very much the opposite. We should try it. We should go on a crawl. Get some <laughs> fake moustaches. <laughs> Dealer crawl. Well, lads, lads, lads. Do you have a Daytona? Just see how we get on in each one. That'll be fun, won't it? If you, dear viewer and listener, have had an experience or heard of an experience of someone walking into a Rolex dealer and getting a very sought-after watch straight away, pop it down in the comments below because I don't believe you. But it's not just the the waitlist and the general experience feeling like uh, you are the one who is receiving the favour. There's also this odd notion of discontinuation. Um, you know the Rolex bubble dial, Tom, that came out recently? Oh, yes. Lovely. Colourful and fun. Really nice. <laughs> so the bubble dial, they call it the celebration dial. And on the dial are many different bubbles of different colours, which all represent the colours of the Oyster Perpetuals as they were released in 2020, in celebration of a bunch of colours that have been discontinued either on some of the models or all of the models. So it's Rolex outright saying, do you remember these watches that we made? and how you couldn't get them, and how there was a long waiting list for them. Well, we've discontinued those, and now you can not buy a watch that celebrates the watches you also couldn't buy. Here to commemorate those long forgotten colours. Here's a horrible watch. Yeah, I mean, so what? Well, it does seem to be that they're creating 
demand for things by only running them for a period of time. Not necessarily making limited editions of things, but you know this particular one. Oh, the Platinum Daytona with the Sapphire case back. That's going to be collectible. The Bubble Dial, that's going to be collectible. There's a deliberate notion to create these things that, to, to kind of perpetuate that demand. You see it. It's not just Rolex here. You, you see it. The Omega Seamaster with the green dial, which still continues to be very, very difficult to get. Or the Snoopy, the silver Snoopy, when you can walk in and buy a normal Moonwatch or a normal Seamaster, no problem. Yeah, it very much seems to be the Eric Cartman school of marketing. You can't have this watch, doesn't it? I don't think there's any one nefarious action going on. I think it's just the sheer process of supply and demand, popularity, branding. All of those things come together in the perfect storm to create an experience that's become almost um, cartoonish. I mean, it's a shame. We'd all like to enjoy nice things, wouldn't we? But... Um... If you want to enjoy nice things, well, you got to wait for them and then pay. The grass is always greener. The fear is of missing out. Uh, and that's the way it's always been and always will be. There you go. Dear viewer and listener, what do you think of the Rolex consumer experience at the moment? Wait lists, customer service, discontinuation. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And while you're writing, why not click over to watchfinder.com as well and have a little look at the Rolexes that you can get there. Thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye.